Admiral's log, December 5th, 1914. We've done it. The blockade is over. For some reason, the Royal Navy just up and left. My spies in Portsmouth and Plymouth tell me it was quite the sight. Columns of British warships coming back into port. The sailors looked dejected and seemed to be in low spirits. The spies overheard several officers in a pub. They were discussing how they were not ready to give up the blockade. It seemed to have been a decision from higher up. Are the British done with the war? Are they finally broke? Or is the British morale broken? Have we finally beaten their stiff upper lip bloody? Whatever the cause of lifting the blockade might be, I am grateful. We had the funds to keep going for a month or two, but no more. Suddenly, I have access to the full might of the German Navy's budget. I instantly ordered crew training to resume and to focus on the rebuilding of our merchant fleet. Let's finish this war. Hey guys, still here and welcome to episode 13. Um, this is rather the re-recording of episode 13 because, I, well, my recording initially got lost. I'm not sure exactly what happened to the file, but it was completely unreadable. As I have told you in the Admiral's Log, quite a lot of things have happened, but since the Admiral's Log, some more stuff has happened, such as the destruction of one of my battleships. But not without cost to the British, they lost two of their battleships. They're also starting to run a little low on heavy cruisers. They only have seven left. I have 14. But it's not telling the whole story. Because not all of my ships are capable of being out to sea. I have a couple of the heavy cruisers out at sea. A couple of them are sea controlling. The Thor and the Prince Heinrich. I have my battle cruisers. Seidlitz, Grosse Kurfürst and Star out to, battle, or to, out to sea control. Um, the battleships are all out there. But the destroyers I have kept in port. And I'm trying to get my uh, transport capacity back up as quickly as possible because I'm down to 63%. The lower you go with this, the more difficult it will be to come back. Because it is just incredibly difficult to keep building transports. Especially at a rate at which they're getting destroyed currently. I can hardly keep it around the 60s. So let's see if I can find... There we go. Find and eliminate some more of their transports. Uh, my budget is still not very favorable. But I don't really have the luxury of reducing this that much. Because now I'd be losing transport. This is building it 1.3 or yeah, 1.3%. And I well, I have some crew training going on, but not nearly in the reaches of what I would like. Ah, oh, stop killing my transports, please. At this rate, I won't have an economy. And where's the enemy, damn it? It's July. There we go, battleship. The battleship Odin versus the Hibernia. Let's sink that battleship, please. I would be so delighted if I could simply eliminate the British by getting rid of their economy and blockading them. But so far, it just hasn't happened. Let's slow the ship down to full. So let's say about 15 knots as a preparation for the actual encounter. Because despite crew training, I'm still at cadets. And the Odin is just going to have to get fairly close and hope that we can hit the target. Early spot. And I gotta say, quite the beautiful skybox, although it is a bit pixely. I hope that we're going to get some high res skybox images like that. Or rather, not like that, but better than that. Because this, this could do with a slight upgrade. Anyway, as opposed to the Odin, the Hibernia probably does have a trained crew. Most likely a veteran crew, despite I don't recall that I've ever faced the Hibernia before. Um, she's got her 6 12-inch guns. That's A, B, X, as well as the wing turrets port and starboard. Making her for a pretty long ship. So, ideally, a fairly large target profile with a terrible turning circle, but without torpedo tubes, it's not going to be that influential on this particular battle. That is, if we get closer, we might have an option to try and get some good flanking shots on them. But right now, it's mostly deck pen, if I can even get that. What seemed to be an interesting encounter between two battleships actually turned into an extremely boring fight of the Hibernia running away, the Odin running after her, both operating at full speed, 19.5 knots, 19 knots, and neither really doing any damage to the other. So I gained a whole three victory points and both ships were lightly damaged. 
Uh, that is about it. Sadly, it does look like after this particular encounter, I'm going to have to put some ships back in dock because I simply can't afford to operate them. I'm still bleeding 2 million a month thanks to fixing up a battleship. Uh, what ships can I put in? I don't know. Let's bring the heavy cruisers back into in being. 1.8 million a month. What is so expensive? Is that the battle cruisers? 1.5 million each. Fine, go back to in being. That's going to save me half a million a month. In being, half a million a month. Oh, it's still 800k down. I desperately need more transports. And I really, really need to sink more of their ships. Oh, this again? Fine. Let's see if this time around we can actually get them. It seems that both ships have been able to get quite a lot of distance because we seem to be in an entirely different AO. That's fine. I found that over the campaign, my confidence of I'm definitely going to win this to I'm definitely going to lose this swung wildly. I really don't know whether I'm going to be able to win this one. I really don't know. The one time I sink a bunch of battleships and I go, yes, we got this. The next time I see you've lost this transport, you've lost, lo lost that transport, you've lost that transport, and I think, oh, there goes the economy. And the more ships I pull back into dock, the worse it's going to get. I really don't know how this one's going to end. Oh, really? Again? Come on. Grow a pair, Hibernia. Stop running away. You know what? I'm not even going to bother. If they're going to run away all the time, I'm not going to bother. I need the Odin intact because repairing her is going to be too expensive. Sad as that is. Uh, the British, again, don't seem to have this problem. Or at least not to the extent that I am struggling with it. We can at least inflict a tiny slither of damage. That'd be great because then they might have to pay for repairs. But I rather doubt that we'll be able to even get one hit on them. These battleship encounters are so sad. It seems that the battleships are crewed by captains which are far less interested in fighting than the battle cruisers. Because their battle cruisers have absolutely no problem whatsoever coming after me. And when they do, they generally cause a lot of damage in the form of turrets popping off the ship. And on top of that, um, some floodings here and there. And of course, this leads me to a draw. No damage on either side. I'm very slowly getting a little bit of money. But the moment I get one ship that takes damage, I'm going to be in trouble. Slowly but steadily, we're once again creeping towards the 70%. Oh, and we're down again. 62% and we're down 1.5 million a month. Good lord. Okay, let's take down the Magnificence, or at least try that. See if this one does have a captain that's eager to fight. To the northwest we go. This does look like it's going to be an interesting fight, because we have encountered each other at a mere 4.8 kilometers, thanks to this being a nighttime battle. Now at this angle, I'm not going to be penning their bows. So let's bring all guns to HE. Turn a bit to port, slow down to half speed, and get ready to smash this British warship to the depths of the North Sea. Or wherever we're currently operating. Yep, switch back to auto. This could be a beautiful amount of pens. If we can hit. We got a 20% chance to hit. So naturally we don't. We already have a bouter dam how how are these things getting damaged all the time? I have 12 and a half inches plus 93% on 12 inch turrets. I think it might not be the turrets, it's the barbettes. The barbettes are the ones that are constantly getting blown up. I need to get more barbette armor. Chance to pen is ridiculous. Oh, magnificent. Are you going to run away again? 
Yeah. Well, this time around, I already got a pretty decent accuracy. So I might be able to damage you a bit. And then hopefully slow you down so you don't run away at your full 19.5 knots. Accuracy 27% and dropping as the ship increases speed to try and desperately keep up with the Magnificence. Come on, Kaiser. Get the damage in. Even if it's only high explosive. Ship is down to 19.1 knots. I'll take it. Can you pen me? Not very well. But you can pen the barbette. Yeah, it's the barbettes that continuously take damage. It's not the turrets. At least not as much. No, the turrets themselves are impenetrable. It's the barbettes. That's the thing that I need to up armor more. So barbette 3 for the next ship. Uh, although, that would mean that I would have a next ship. And at this rate, I can barely afford rent. Um, <laughs> as it were. Can barely keep the afford to keep the ships that I have afloat. So building a new battleship is entirely out of the question. There you go, you're down to 84%. Your speed is dropping like a brick. Because you got an engine damaged. Not so magnificent now, huh? You and your damaged engine. And they only have one 10 incher on the stern. I destroyed a main gun, set a wing turret. Yep. How? What the fuck? <laughs> the Kaiser's over. To the starboard bow of the Magnificent. I destroyed this turret. Starboard side to the bow. I don't know. Best not to ask any questions. What? Okay, increase the flank. We need to reacquire the target. Oh, crap. My main tower's been destroyed. That's not going to help with accuracy, and it's definitely not what I want to see, because my fires will rage longer, my floodings will continue. It's bad. What's your speed like? 14 knots? Okay, we'll slow the ship down to 16, continue to close, and maintain accuracy. Yes. 13.7, 13.5. More damage to the main gun. It's getting concerning. I would really hate to add yet another turret to the bottom of the North Sea here. Or again, or wherever we're operating. Chance to pen 22, chance to pen 20. Crap. We're gonna need a bigger gun. Hold on, did I destroy their stern battery? Yeah, I did. That's a... 7 inch? Yeah, their 7 incher is done. It's not a main battery. But a 7 incher can still put some serious fires. So this is a win. So they basically got 10s, 4s and 3s that are currently harming my ship. That shouldn't be too difficult to deal with. Let's angle away a little more. I'm trying to get all of my stern turrets involved, but this one's getting blocked by the other one. I know that this is potentially risky. Yes. Casemate. Fire. It's more like it. Steady. Feels a bit sad only launching HE at them. It works though. Because so far, I probably would have bounced everything with AP. High ricochet chance? No joy. What's your speed? 12. Okay. Those 10 inches are probably bouncing off of the belt. Yep. You're having some serious trouble doing damage. Structural integrity there, 59%. Mine, 98. We don't really have all the bridge officers left, probably, with the main tower getting destroyed. But our ship is still fairly accurate. 25% chance to hit with the mains. So we consistently land generally one or two hits. 
I can live with that. Fire, 50, 55% structural. We'll get you, Magnificent. We'll get you. You and your veteran crew. And your 10-inch guns. We'll get you. Destroyed main gun. What do we get this time? The stern 10-incher. No longer functional. So that means that they have the port side wing turret. As well as that bow turret. So the B turret. So their ability to return fire is seriously crippled. Because I don't really take the 4 and the 3 inchers as very dangerous weapon systems. Those casemates? Eh. We should be fine. Destroyed another casemate. So that's 7... No, that's the f potentially a 4 incher? No. Oh, I think that since we're hitting this side of the ship, it's one of the three inches that got destroyed. Good. Less firefighting or fire setting capability. Destroyed another main gun. If that's true, that is. You can really see how the starboard side of the ship is just pristine. Well, except for that turret. And then over here, you got a ton of high explosive impacts. The game is suggesting that I end the battle, but absolutely not. Because the Magnificent's not dead yet. That needs to be arranged. I really hope that the loss of the British battleship is going to cause another blow to morale. Because there are various ways you can win the war. You can win the war by basically crippling their economy. You can also win the war by causing enough unrest. And that happens when the war is not going well. I think losing a couple of battleships in a few months qualifies. So just keep crippling their, well, let's say their most proud ships, their capital ships, and we might actually be able to cause enough unrest in the country to just end this war. 34%, yeah, we should be able to get this. A little while later, when the endgame phase and the Kaiser Wilhelm de Gross has taken some damage, we've reduced 10% structural integrity, we've taken on a little bit of flooding, but that's nowhere near the state of the Magnificent. Her structural integrity was reduced to zero, her buoyancy 2%, and her crew completely eliminated. So that's another big British battleship out of this fight. And yet, the British press on. I have gained more than twice their amount of victory points, but it's not enough. And on top of that, I'm of course once again in the shit as one of my battleships is repairing for a month. Oh god, I lost nine transport ships. I'm down 3.7 million a month. I really have no idea what else to focus on. Because I can do it like... Like this, I guess. Just very, very, very slowly building up transport cap capability. And then getting as many ships out there as possible. Uh, you know what? We can just have the gunboats try and harass their convoys if such a thing is possible. Let's get some of the cruisers out there. Sea controlling. Minus 3k. That's a bit... Oh, sorry, 300k. That's a bit much. You guys back... 7,000 a month. I'll take it. Oh, no. Stop killing my transports. Jesus. Okay. Uh, we got the Ostfriesland, the Seitlitz, the Freya, the Prince Adalbert, the V11 and the V14 against the Duke of York, the Hibernia, the 4th, the Pegasus Pioneer and Nerissa. This is the biggest fight we've had. Nice. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, I want the Ostfriesland and the battleship. Oh, sorry, it's the battle cruiser, Seitlitz. The battle cruiser, it's not a battleship. I want you guys to operate together in a tight formation. No torpedoes unless otherwise directed. The destroyers, same deal, scout ahead. The enemies to the west. I need to know where. I'm going to have the Ostfriesland slow down a touch. And I want the Seitlitz just. 
Yeah, just slowing down as well, at least for now. The Seitlitz is one of the new battle cruisers. She is untested. She has a lot of armor, 9 inch main belt, 8 inch fore belt, 8 inch aft belt, which is better than the Ostfriesland, which has a heavy main belt, but far less fore and aft belt. Her conning tower is protected by 13.7 inches of uh, conning tower, oh, sorry, of armor, superstructure 1.4. This ship has more superstructure armor. She has a couple of 4 inch guns to defeat smaller ships, but overall, she is a capital ship killer. That is her role. All right, these two cruisers, we're gonna have to make, well, we're gonna have to make good work of these or good use of these. Northwest, that way. My concern here is that I will take a lot of damage and I don't have the budget to fix shit up. So it'll probably lead me to either reducing my transport capability even more or my, my ability to build transport ships. Or I'm going to have to start scrapping ships, which is bad for my power projection and may lead to yet another blockade. Whichever it is, it's going to be bad. First contact with the enemy, and it is a battleship. Interesting. They're leading with their battleships. The uh, site leads is already at a very nice 5% accuracy. Ostfriesland, I'm gonna turn you to port. I'm gonna push him with the heavy cruisers and the gunboats. The sooner I can eliminate a battleship, the sooner I will have the upper hand. I'm expecting the battleships to start turning actually to starboard to try and bring as much firepower to bear against my destroyers. And that would put them right in the way of the heavy cruisers. That's the plan. Smoke up. Side leads. You're, you're doing pretty nicely on that flank there. Keep that up. Uh, 2.9 kilometer range. Uh oh. You know what? Just torp it. Just torp it and we'll see if we can make it work. Not like that, dummy. Detach. What you got there? There's a DD blended in there. Shit. Okay, launch the torps against the Hibernia. With the V14. Because they got quite a few ships out there. I don't care if we strictly miss the Hibernia, but it will force some other ships to correct course. You guys maintain flank speed. Come on. Get your torps out. You. Oh, fuck. No, 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 no. That's pretty terrible. What the hell is the Hibernia doing? She's completely changing direction. Torpedoes away from the 14. Excellent. Um, the Adelbert did take a torp. Her bow's flooding, but otherwise okay. Normal selection of torpedoes. Where's the Ostfriesland? Flanking. Well, not flanking strictly, just doing as much damage as possible. Adelbert has launched a torpedo. These are light cruisers. Oh shit, that's torpedoes. Hard right, to port. Hibernia took one torpedo on the nose. Starboard launcher away from the Adelbert. Flash fire on the Hibernia. Yes, please. Uh, new target for the heavy cruisers and their torpedoes is going to be the light cruisers. Turn. Target. The V11's dead in the water. She's not going. Another flash fire on Hibernia. Torpedo away against the Pioneer. Is that fast enough to catch her? Should be. Yep, on the stern. 
Freya also launched her torpedo. Prince Adalbert is taking a lot of damage from the Duke of York. Torpedoes away from the Pioneer. Prince Adalbert might be in trouble. Torpedo from the Freya missed the Pioneer. Starboard launcher. Sorry, port launcher, not starboard launcher. Torps off. Where's my battle cruiser at? Here. Continue to fire. Light cruiser Pioneer has been hit by another torpedo. I'm assuming that was Freya's port side launcher. So that could very well be the end of the Pioneer, considering her incredibly high amount of damage. We've got the Pegasus there, the Nerissa, and the fourth. Pioneer sinks. Excellent kill. Sight leads. Gunboat V11 dies. Shit. Uh, secondaries on that. You can barely pen that ship, if at all. Freya launched a torpedo against the battleship, which is still mobile. So my chances of keeping that thing within that torpedo arc are very limited. 14's reloading. Good. I'm gonna eliminate that battleship. That's the prize. Yeah, that torpedo is not going to hit. Not at all. Freya, increase speed to flank. I don't care about your accuracy on guns. I need your accuracy on torps. Perfect side shot from the side leads. Very low chance of ricochets. We're going to load the AP and punish the Hibernia. Freya, if your bow launcher is available, go. Make use of it. The fourth probably launched torpedoes at this stage. I'm going to turn the Freya around a little bit. HE. We're in a slightly worse spot now. Oh, there's the torpedo. We're going to have to pay a little bit of a visit to the Hibernia here. With the battle cruiser, because I don't see another quick way out of this fight. Flooding on the Hibernia? Yes. Torpedo away from the Freya. The Hibernia is trying to turn, but I doubt that she'll be able to dodge that one successfully. Well, I say that, but she did. Shit. That is not what I wanted to see. At all. Can you even pen that at this range? No. Not really. Chance to ricochet low, load the AP, and fire everything we have. A couple of hits on the bow would be great. Some flooding there. 99% chance to hit. That's more like it. Ricochet chance is going back up. Yes. Stern damage. Excellent. I still have the Ostfriesland, which is completely full health. The Prince Adelbert is probably going to get nominated to get scrapped. We got a torpedo hit. Oh, that was the Freya and her stern launcher. <coughs> well done. Didn't expect that. Come on. 3%, 2%. Structural integrity. 11%. Load the HE. Couple of good bow hits and she's done. Need one flooding. And that's not it. The fourth has launched torpedoes against the heavy cruiser. Really? How do you see that going down? Auto selector. Hibernia just perish already. The fourth is no longer a torpedo threat. Come on. 
6% structural, 2% buoyancy, maintained. Cyclitz took her first hit, I think. Ostfriesland and Duke of York are, pardon the pun, duking it out. Okay. Yes. No, wrong compartment. Damn it. There you go. Dead. Beautiful. Well done, Sightleads. You're useful after all. Now, let's see if we can punch a couple of holes in the Duke of York using the Ostfriesland. In the meanwhile, intercept the Pegasus. Because she has torpedoes. A full complement of them. And I don't like that one bit. Secondaries against the Nerissa. High explosive. Just hit the bow of the Pegasus, blow it apart. That's it. For some reason we have <laughs> not hit the bow at all, but we hit the stern. I'll take it. I'll take it, I don't mind. I'm not picky. The Pegasus has selected the battleship over there as her main target. Interesting. Wouldn't be my first pick. Yeah, I'm going to let the 14 just get away. That's fine. She hasn't launched her torpedoes, though. And I'm concerned that at some point she's going to reconsider and hit the sightlets with the torps. So please, a good hit of H uh, AP. There you go. That ought to give them a little bit of pause. The Nerissa is definitely not getting hit. The fourth was out of torpedoes. Freya, I need you to come back in here. Ostfriesland is doing a fantastic job hunting down the Duke of York. I really, really enjoy this new battlecruiser design. So far, it's done incredibly well. And sure enough, they haven't really been getting that much attention from the British battleships and cruisers. But even if they were, I doubt that they'd be taking that much damage considering of that massive armor. In fact, let's say the Duke of York would take a shot. Yeah, they can't pen it. The entire hull is impenetrable, at least at this range. Whereas the closer we get, the more that will change. At this rate, the Sightless is most definitely going to be the MVP. The one thing that they don't do very well is eat torpedoes. They're not very well at processing those. And I'm not really supposed to hunt down light cruisers with these things either. But as long as the Pegasus continues to see the... I think the Prince Adelbert is the biggest threat. And lock her torpedo launcher against the Prince Adelbert. The Sightleads can just harass and eliminate her without any kind of concern. Finish her. Situation here. Not too bad. Not too bad. The beauty of the Sightleads is also that she has a pretty powerful engine. She can turn very quick, but what she can do is rush you. She can be relocated to another area of the battlefield quickly. Which is exactly what I need her to do. I need you to target the fourth. There goes Pegasus. We're going to finish off the fourth next. Lost Friesland. Are you turning? That would be a fairly bad idea. What are you targeting? What? Okay. The AI is scared shitless of anything that carries torpedoes. That's why they continue to target the heavily damaged Prince Adelbert. Which really will not deserve to get scrapped. I mean, her contribution is basically punching bag. She has taken 2.7 thousand of, uh, sorry, 2.7k damage. While not doing that much damage herself. But she was basically the punching bag of the British fleet. And that allowed others, such as the Freya, to get away with 1900 damage. 
and the site leads with a little over 6,000 at this point. This is going to be a big, big blow to the British. Because it means that in this one episode they have lost three battleships. Destroyed main tower, 14% structure, oh, sorry, 40% buoyancy. Let's just finish them off with a couple of well-placed high explosive salvos. There you go. Freya, I need you to start reinforcing over here. That could have been an AP salvo. Duke of York is once again turning out. Yes. Have at it. Now, my, have my, my, my main turrets keep getting destroyed, but these Br British ships also have a bit of an issue with that. Oh, that shot. Nice. Fourth is down to 6% buoyancy. Last salvo. Nope. She's, <laughs> she's back up to 10. Okay, fine. Duke of York's down to 29%. Yeah, we got these guys. I think we can easily get three, three and a half thousand victory points out of this one. Let's flood them out, bow and stern. Nope. Target the bows, sight leads. The bow. That's where their buoyancy is currently located. One percent buoyancy. Oh, for crying out loud. Some really nice damage over there on the Duke of York. Her buoyancy is also dropping. They still got a DD over here somewhere. Yeah, the Narissa. The fourth is down. Okay, you're going to speed right back up and reinforce the battleship. In so far as the Ostfriesland is going to need any help. Which it won't. It won't. So we're just hunting down one destroyer. The Narissa. Which is finding herself almost trapped between the Freya and the Ostfriesland. She can do 32 knots. And she is running for her life. The side leech is desperate to catch up. Yeah, I can't catch that. <laughs> she might be pincered between my ships. But I can't catch that. That's 32 knots of DD. Okay, fine. Well, I'll let this one escape. And inform the British that the Germans have a very powerful new battle cruiser in the field. The Seitlitz. 5.8k victory points. Holy shit. The next holy shit's gonna be my budget. Minus 4.3 million a month. Oh my god. That's a that's atrocious. Um Prince Adelbert, I am sorry, but you're 4.80, yeah, you're 485 thousand a month. The Freya did so well, but I can't afford to operate her anymore. Scrap. Ah, the V14 is another 387,000. I'm still looking at minus 1.8 million. Okay, bring the fleet back in. Oh, the V11 is done. Never mind. Minus 1.3 million. Um, the Odin, the Kaiser, we're going to bring these ships back in. <sighs> That's it. Their navy's down to 36 ships from their once proud 70 plus navy. 70 plus ships. They're down to 9 battleships, 1 battlecruiser, 7 heavies, 10 lights and 9 destroyers. I hope I can just make this budget work for just a little longer, but it feels like I'm snowballing to death. And it doesn't look good. The unrest is still pretty much around the 70s. I am liked as an admiral, but that's about it. 
Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon for the next.